Hey there, Whitefield. Pastor Mike here. So glad you chose to join me today for this midweek update. I hope you are doing excellent, and I hope all your family is as well. I want you to know that I'm looking forward to being back with you Sunday, May 31st. Um, if you haven't received the email, we're, we're going to have two services that day. We'll have a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. The 9 a.m. will be for those who are 50 years old and older. And the 11 a.m. will be for those who are 49 years old and under. And we're doing those two services in that way to, to keep the, the total number of folks in the congregation at a, at a safe uh, number. And, and so I, I hope that you'll, um, you'll be patient with us and flexible with us. Um, for the time being as we run those multiple services on, on Sunday morning. Um, we'll also be looking for a, a letter in the mail uh, with more sp specific instructions regarding our, our uh, service uh, beginning on May 31st, uh, but we're looking forward to it, and I hope that you are. I know I've had a lot of positive feedback from, uh, from folks in our church I just can't wait to see each other. So, um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that day, and I know that you are. Well, today we're gonna continue our our look and our our devotion and our study in the book of Habakkuk, and we're gonna be in chapter two today. We're gonna be looking at the first four verses, Habakkuk chapter two, verses one through four, and the word of the Lord says, "I will take my stand at my watch post." and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. Once again, we see Habakkuk is living in a very difficult time. And last week we saw where he was honest with God, uh, with what he saw and what he perceived. But he was also faithful. At the end, he knew that, that God was from everlasting and that he would not die, that uh, because he followed God who's everlasting, he would be everlasting as well. And so in our verses today, Habakkuk says, all right, he's going he's gonna to watch and he's going to see what the Lord will do because even though he's living in difficult times, God tells him that he's continuing to, to work. And so he says, I will take my stand at my watch post. I will, I will look. I will, I will look to see what God will do. And so God begins to speak, and he says, uh, make this, write this vision. Make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For, the, for still the vision awaits is appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. So God says, I'm, I'm going to do a work. And it's going to be a great work. It's going to be a wonderful work. And you keep watching for it, Habakkuk. And then he says, wait for it. He says, if it seems slow, wait for it. Now, you and I both know that we can be, at times, a tad impatient, right? You and I can be impatient. and We, we kind of want things yesterday. That's how quickly we want them. We want them yesterday. And God says, I'm doing a work, but, but Habakkuk, you're going to have to wait for it. You're going to have to wait for it. You're going to have to wait patiently for it. And so what I'd like to just, just, just talk about just for the next few moments is what, what does it look like to, to wait for it? What does it look like to, to wait on God? What are some of the things that we, we need in order to wait for God to work when we think or we, it seems like he's not working? Well, first thing, we're going to need patience. And patience, as you and I know as believers, is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. 
that that comes through following God and 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 the Holy Spirit empowers every believer uh, to to have patience. But patience is is the comes from the fruit of the of the Spirit comes from God. But also we have to exercise patience as followers of God, which means patience is also a, an act of of our will, of your will, of my will. We have to choose to be patient. And so God tells Habakkuk, be patient. Wait for it. And Habakkuk has to choose to be patient. And what what really connects with that, with that patience is having the right view of God. And as we saw from last week, Habakkuk understands that God is from everlasting to everlasting. He has always been. He will always be. And because he's God, he's, he's over all things. Because he's God, Habakkuk can trust, and you and I can trust, that God knows what he's doing. He's a God who cannot lie. He's a God who cannot make mistakes. And so he is working even when it seems like he's not. And so our patience is directly connected to our perspective, our view of God himself. If he's truly sovereign, if he's truly almighty and all-knowing and all-powerful, we can, we can rest, we can wait for him to work, knowing he's going to work it all out in his time and in, and in his way. And so we can we can trust in him to to do that. And and so when we base our lives, our thoughts, our actions on the truth, and the, and they and they flow from there, the truth that God is who He is, and He will He will remain the same, and He is from everlasting to everlasting, and He is sovereign, and He is all powerful, and He is all knowing. That we can be patient. That when God He's going to bring about what needs to be brought about, and he's going to bring his children all the way home, all the way to him. And, and so we, we can confidently have patience during a very difficult time, which we are in right here and right now. And because if our view of God, if our perspective of God is based on what's true about him then then we can we can rest assured that that he's going to do all that he says he's going to do and he's going to bring us safely home and so when we think about the having the proper patience in the in the perspective we know that as he wraps it up he says behold his soul is puffed up it is not right within him but the righteous shall live by his faith and so we can have patience when we have the proper perspective. But it all what all ties that in together is, is our faith. Is our faith. And we look we look to Jesus, church. We look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, knowing that. The only thing that, that can sink you and me, that can sink our ship, if our lives are ships, let's just use this metaphor, just go with me here. The only thing that can sink our ships is sin. And because of Christ, that sin has been paid for. So that means nothing. Not a virus, not an economic downturn, Nothing can sink you or me because of Jesus, and we look to him. And so church, during these difficult times, we can have patience because we have the proper perspective. We're, we're, we're looking to God. We've got the right view of God. And, and through that faith that ties that together, we're looking to Jesus who meets our every need and has meet, met our greatest need the forgiveness of sin. And so, church continue to live by faith. And like the Apostle Paul said over in Romans 8, 
He said, for I consider the, the, the current sufferings of, of this time not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. And so what we're going through now is just a just a just a small little little fraction compared to the to the glory of eternity that we're going to experience one day, church. It has been so good to be with you again for this midweek update. I love you. I'll see you soon. God bless.